Live from Waterford and Ungarvan, this is Waterford at One News. Good afternoon, I'm Emer McKeown. Today's top stories. The COVID-19 unemployment payment will be extended beyond mid-June. A Fianna Fáil member in Worshford says he is totally opposed to entering government with Fine Gael and the Greens. The number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 at University Hospital Worshford has fallen to two. And in sport, the Worshford senior hurling manager says there's a case for abandoning this year's championship. The COVID-19 unemployment payment and wage subsidy scheme will be extended beyond mid-June. Taoiseach Leo Varadkar has said no decision has been made on how long it will last for or if there will be a rate reduction after next month. He has also told the doll it is possible that the coronavirus arrived in Ireland late last year or early this year, earlier than first thought. Leo Varadkar has said that the payments are being made to support businesses and people who've lost their jobs because of the virus. It was an unprecedented action and it's not affordable for it to last forever. And I think the vast majority of people in the country understand that. However, it will need to continue, at least until people have the opportunity to return to their jobs. And for the vast majority, that won't be possible before mid-June. So yes, it will need to be extended beyond mid-June. And I'm happy to say that here in the House today. A Fianna Fáil member in Worshford says he is totally opposed to entering government with Fine Gael and the Greens. Seamus O'Neill is a former constituency organiser and current honorary president of the constituency executive. He has called for Micheál Martin to consider stepping down and making way for a new leader. Mr O'Neill spoke to Damien Tiernan on Daysha today. I am totally opposed to it, you know. I am totally opposed to uh, coalitions on the basis that they all end in tears. You know, every one we've been in with, you know, not saying it's the other party's fault, you know. And what I would like to see is I would like Fianna Fáil to make a fresh start, rebuild the party from scratch. However, Councillor John O'Leary, chairperson of the Fianna Fáil party in Washford, says his views aren't reflective of the party locally. That's not the information that we have the electorate uh, spoke at uh, the general election. We were left in a position where we, we got the most seats. Uh, there's an onus on Fianna Fáil. There's an onus in the moment we're faced now with, with a pandemic of something we've never seen the like before. There's an onus on the bigger parties to form a government. It's not what Fianna Fáil would like. It's not what Fianna Fáil would want. But it's something that has to be done. The number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 at University Hospital Worshiford has fallen to two. For the first time in several weeks, there are no patients with the virus in intensive care. A spokesperson for the hospital told WLR News that as, as of seven o'clock this morning, there were two positive cases on site and that a further 11 patients are awaiting the results of testing. Entire Garda units are being forced to self-isolate because of the coronavirus, according to the Garda Representative Association. The organisation is expressing its disappointment at the lack of priority COVID-19 testing for its members. President Jim Mulligan says it's a disgrace that Garda have been told they won't be given priority testing. Our members are very disappointed. We've been looking for this since the early stages of the crisis. Um, we've had situations where in, in one division a few weeks ago we had 45 Gardaí had to go into self-isolation. We've had a unit in Dublin recently had to go into isolation uh, awaiting a test result from a member who had contracted or, or had been in close contact. The Fianna Fáil leader has said the lack of clarity and the leaving cert is unacceptable. The government has said the plan is for the exams to go ahead at the end of July. However, there's growing calls for the exams to be scrapped and replaced with predictive grading. Fianna Fáil leader Micheál Martin says there needs to be clarity soon. The situation in relation to the leaving certificate is unacceptable. Every single government in Europe has been confronted with how to complete school leaving exams and prepare for a new higher education year. Nowhere has there been such a lack of clarity and confusion. The fact that the reopening document published last week failed to address it is remarkable. Meanwhile, the CAO Change of Mind facility is now open. Applicants will be able to register an online change of course choice free of charge until the 1st of July. Dr Derek O'Byrne from WIT says a good college experience is key to career progression. If you 
you enjoy your college experience, you're going to do well in college, you're going to come out of college with a good degree, and you're going to end up with a good career. And in some ways, that's nearly independent of what it is you start studying in college. People change career regularly, and, and, and that's the phenomenon of, of, of the modern world. Laura Swift says she's really disappointed to give up her seat on Worshford City and County Council. She replaced Green Party TD Marco Cahasig in February after he was elected to the Dáil. She says her employer has informed her that her work in the Family Mediation Service means she can't work as a local representative. Laura Swift says she wasn't aware of this stipulation. My work as family mediator involves working with couples who are separating, trying to get them to organise how they go forward. So, yeah, as I say, it's just unfortunate. Uh, It wasn't something that I thought of at the time. And the the times we live in are a bit up in the air at the moment. So I wasn't in contact that much with, with work and that. So that's probably why there was a bit of a delay in finding out. I appreciate very much the opportunity I got from the Greens. They were extremely helpful and really supportive of me for the time that I was there and I was just getting into my stride. A Worshford company has applied for planning permission to convert an iconic shop on the key to offices. Kylie Gall Financial Services has bought 87 and 88 Coal Key, which was previously home to John Hearn Hardware. They employ 12 people at present and have applied for planning permission from Worshford City and County Council. Charles Gall is the owner and managing director. Our building here is not big enough for us anyway. And Johnny Hearns, uh, when it became available, it was something um, that we were looking at to expand our business. So we've looked at it and we've put in for a planning application for it. Now, it has also special memories for me because when I was a 15-year-old, I used to work there part-time going to school. He says they want to give the building a new lease of life. It's a lovely building. Uh, it enhances, we'll say, the, the town when you go down. And it's part of Waterford and the heritage of it, like, I mean, alone. So we would hope uh, with our planning application that, you know, we would develop it the way it is and, and give it a new lease of life. Obviously, we can't change the structure on it, but, you know, I think it would be a lovely building to operate from. The Court of Appeal is hearing an appeal over the High Court's decision to extradite a man to the UK to face multiple manslaughter charges. The charges arise from the discovery of 39 bodies in the back of a lorry in Essex last year. Our court's correspondent Frank Rainey reports. Eamon Harrison, a truck driver from Mayo Bridge, County Down, was arrested in Dublin a few days after the bodies of 39 Vietnamese nationals were found. Police believe he brought the container to a port in Belgium before it was transported to England last October. His surrender was ordered by the High Court in Dublin earlier this year, but is on hold pending the outcome of this appeal. His barrister Siobhan Stack told the court today her arguments focused on the interpretation of EU law governing European arrest warrants. She raised issues about the warrant itself during Mr Harrison's extradition hearing. Initially claiming it wasn't detailed enough to justify his surrender. She also argued the additional information requested was not sent by the appropriate UK authority. The court heard it was instead provided by the Crown Prosecution Service, but she says the law requires it to be provided by the issuing judicial authority. Frank Gwenny at the Court of Appeal. WLR Sport, Ireland's local station of the year. The Washford senior hurling manager says there's a case for abandoning this year's championship. The GAA remains committed to producing club and inter-county championships this year. However, the latter won't occur until October. Liam Cahill told WLOR's Damien Tiernan on Dacia Today that there will have to be a decision by July. There's definitely a case for it. I think again, come July, that scenario will be unavoidable. There'll have to be an answer to that come then, I'd imagine. And I think the GAA are giving it every chance. That's why I was one looking for clarity there last week or the week before last, uh, ahead of maybe most people publicly. And I can see now, like they've given us a little bit of, of, of where things are going, um, in fairness to them. And, and that's fine. But I definitely think by July, they'll have to nail their colours to the mass and say well, or whether 2020 is going to happen or not. The GAA's Director of Communications, Alan Milton, doesn't think the idea of a two of two senior championships in one year is far fetched. It's not a harebrained scheme at all. It's something that we flagged a long way back. If it had to, it only comes into sharp focus if we can't hold a championship in 2020. But I, I think there will be a, a groundswell of appetite within the organisation to definitely dis- have the CCC look at this forensically and discuss whether it would be possible to hold one in the early part of 2021 and then the regular championship perhaps push back a little bit in, in the latter part of the year. 
Finally to soccer, the Dutch health minister has warned that fans may not be able to return to watch sporting events until a coronavirus vaccine is found. Professional sport, even behind closed doors in the Netherlands, has been cancelled until at least September. This has already led to the top flight Eredivisie football competition ending prematurely. WLR asking you to stay at home. Our next bulletin is at 2.00.